Meet John Harper. He's a lot like other children his age, but there's one difference. John was born with a devastating genetic disease, a previously unrecognised condition that condemns him to severe social stigmatisation. Fortunately, the evolution of genetic research has enabled scientists to discover that John's illness and subsequent actions are caused by a surprisingly common genetic mutation. This knowledge will affect our perception of millions of people across the world and is a landmark on our journey to the understanding of human behaviour. We are talking about the discovery of the asshole gene. This journey started here in Edinburgh, where an international team of geneticists made the discovery by accident. Marcus Ross is the manager of the Edinburgh International Genetic Laboratory. When their investigations began five years ago, they were only trying to understand the lack of empathy in some individuals. They never expected to find this mutation of the Acinus foramen gene. What is really important about this discovery is that it changes our perspective on this group of people. Before, they were simply f bastards. Now, they're poor, sick people. This is how the mutations expressed with everybody, not just ninjas and dancers. Uh, they're the kinds of silhouettes I found. And the robots represent normal kids. No, no superpowers, nothing like that. The point is that the gene is recessive, so even if your parents aren't assholes, the child can be. And this opens the door to uh, a global spread of information to a world of undiagnosed patients. For Joseph and Anne, it was shocking to discover that their only son was an asshole. Well, being a first time mom, I, I didn't really know that it was a problem until my babysitter actually said to me, look, he's not like the other children I have had. He's being a little and I actually want to strangle him in the bathtub, and those were her exact words. Right, yeah, um, and I don't know, I mean, um, we just thought he was normal, you know? Because, um, you know, after all, all children are, you know, little heads. Um, but it turns out in John's case that his behaviour was due to the disease, you know? It really wasn't his fault, which is really frustrating, you know, because well, I, I can't punish him like I want to. <gasps> And, I mean, that that's the worst part. I can't actually say to him that what he's doing is wrong. He, he doesn't understand it. And, you know, I can't blame him and I can't fight against it. And I just, sometimes I just feel like, I just feel like I want to run him down with my car. I really do. Yeah. The implications of this discovery will affect all aspects of society. So we decided to visit Dr. Ron Baines, president of the Scottish Philosophical Association. It's probably too early to talk about this, but one way or another, this totally changes not only our present, but also our past. What if some of the most demonised people in history were just sick people? George Patton, the Emperor Nero, George Bush, Mourinho, Adolf Hitler. Well, Hitler, no, he was just, a, he was just an evil f But anyway, the point is, what will happen when we discover that all our politicians, lawyers and bankers were just sick people. Then we can't really blame them for what they've done. And I don't know about you, but I do want to blame them. An important team of geneticists has gathered at the Edinburgh International Science Festival. This has been chosen as the venue to reveal and debate the discovery. I am Dr. Adam Rutherford and I'm a geneticist and broadcaster and I think that the discovery of the, uh, the arsehole gene has, has been, it's a major step forward in understanding this really significant condition that many people suffer from. The phenotype of being a massive arsehole is, uh, is, is going to be explored over the next couple of years now that we know exactly the genetic cause of being a total arsehole, so I look forward to those, those results as, as soon as they start coming in. But why do arseholes exist? How does the mutation occur? The change, in fact, is quite simple and begins inside the brain. For some reason, yet to be explained, the DNA of some brain cells develops a fifth nucleobase, 
as well as cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. Arseholes also have what scientists have named nastanine, an extra and very annoying nucleobase that messes everything up. At this point of the investigation, we can only detect the existence of the mutation rather than treat it, which is a shame. However, we have a really simple test uh, by which we can detect its existence. We offer the subject a pot of tea and a urine sample jar. And if he's an arsehole, he'll pee in the teapot. Obviously, we can do a genetic test, uh, but this one turned out to be simpler and cheaper. That comes as a welcome revelation for Michael Stevenson, who has, despite continued scepticism, fought for years to get government and society as a whole to accept his belief that this was an illness. What the f*** with that camera, will you? Somebody must have tried to play. Jesus. I've, I've always known I was a sick person. I've known for years. Um, at, at last, there's a, some sort of recognition for people like me. I've been fighting hard, very hard, for, for this time to come. I've been campaigning in newspapers, we can see here, uh, right into several newspapers, including Chinese ones, um, just to try and get some sort of recognition for my condition, which the government refuses to acknowledge, and finally they have to acknowledge it, and they have to take some sort of action for, for arseholes like me. I'm always cutting into queues. I like to start fights with the other customers. Um, I keep stealing my neighbor's mail and swapping them round um, parcels, wrong flats, starts all sorts of fights, it's hilarious. I mean, I can be a nice person, like when I made you that cup of tea, for instance. And I can be an arsehole, like when I spat in it. I care for a biscuit? Michael is the founder of the British Arsehole Foundation, a charity designed to help sufferers like himself. Um, I have a support group for Arsehole's Month, um, this, this meeting has gone very well, it's very, very quiet at this moment, it's, um, it's a good one. He's created a petition to get disability benefits for Arseholes. We've always been blamed for, for this condition and the, the prejudice is still very strong in people's minds. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to get money from people. Just when you explain to them it's for helping Arseholes. So um, I've set up a website. Um, hopefully to try and get donations, yet all I've received is abusive emails from people. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter how hard the struggle gets, I, I will always keep fighting. Right, I'm done. That's it. You can all f*** off now. See ya. Now that the cause has been discovered, what's the next step in the process of improving the quality of life for arseholes? To answer this question, we decided to talk with Vincent Petty, public relations officer for the pharmaceutical company Medical Care, the main investor in the research project that led to the discovery of the arsehole gene. When a discovery like this comes along, the next natural step is to try and fix the problem, to try and help these people. That's why a few months ago we started human clinical trials. What's been really hard, if you think about it, you can always get an arsehole in any clinical trial, but normally you just kick them out of the group. But in this case, every person in this trial is an arsehole, and we have to keep them all in the group. It's been an absolute nightmare. As a company, we feel we have a responsibility to help society. That's why we have collaborated with the government to help inform people. What? The process to inform the general population is starting. There's a concerted information campaign on the streets. The objective is to spread the news of the discovery in a short amount of time. Roberto Ortoprieto, as the first celebrity to be diagnosed, has decided to be one of the leaders of the governmental campaign. The Latin American singer composed a charity song and lent his image for an advertising campaign. friend, my father, my brother, all could be arseholes, inevitable, I, I mean, get tested, seriously.
How many years will it take to find a cure? Are we close to a solution? I don't know. I really don't know when we'll have a cure for this disease. It could be months, it could be years, it could even be decades. But what we have right now is a prenatal test that we can offer to prospective parents to decide whether they want a son or daughter who is going to be an arsehole. This is as far as we've gone for the moment, but I personally, and speaking only for myself, like to think that in a matter of a few decades we could have an arsehole-free world. The possibility of detecting and aborting unborn arseholes has very deep moral implications. That's why we spoke to Father McConnell from the Edinburgh St. Catherine's Church and asked him his opinion. In the church, we've always said that no one has the right to decide whether an innocent unborn child should live or die. We're talking about ending an arsehole's life. The church has a moral obligation to these people to consider them children of God. That's despite the fact no one actually likes them. Even me. What will happen to Michael now? Stop now. Come on. Hey, hey, and what about John? Stop. John? And what will happen to the other assholes whose faces we are not allowed to show because they refuse to sign the broadcasting rights document at the end of the interview despite having been paid? The discovery of the asshole gene brings consequences that are many and profound. And only time will tell how this will affect us all. The one thing we can be sure of at the moment is the one thing everyone suspected since the very dawn of civilization. The world really is full of assholes. We are the ones who make a crappy day A fat nightmare brother Help us 